Are you overwhelmed, stressed out? Maybe you're getting sick, picking up every illness that's out there. Have you been having arguments with people for no apparent reason? Well, if you're interested in bettering your life, please stay tuned because I'm here to help. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mona Friday. I help teach people how to calm their hearts and minds, uh, create inner peace, and also have heartfelt, meaningful conversations using breath work, emotional intelligence, and effective communication. So it is amazing how many things these three skills have in common. So if you learn them and apply them to your life, then your life is definitely going to improve. I'd like to read a very small list of the common benefits that breathwork, emotional intelligence, and effective communication have in common. They can help with improved mental health, personal growth, stress reduction, and greater resilience. Emotional well-being is enhanced as well as better sleep, better communication, improved relationships, better decision making, and conflict resolution. There are so many more, but I just wanted to list a few so you get an idea of how powerful the three of them are together. And in my previous video, I had shared with you how I was working on my breathwork certification. And thankfully, I'm here to say that I did finish. It was a 50 hour um, breathwork certification program and I did complete it. So I am currently working on creating a virtual workshop. And this workshop will include uh, breath work, emotional intelligence, and effective communication. And uh, I'm hoping to have it at the end, you know, the mid to late June. And I'm working on dates and times. So if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them because that will really help me in planning this. And I would love to have as many of you attend as possible. So I'm going to do the first one online and then I do plan to um, do them in person as well. So um, anyway, today I would like to do a little micro mini uh, workshop just to give you an idea of what it's going to be like. So let's pretend that um, you're coming to my workshop to help with some anxiety issues that you have. And um, the way we're going to start is we will start off with doing some breath work to calm your anxiety. And then from there, we'll tap into our emotional intelligence to help guide us. And then we'll wrap it up with emo uh, effective communication to express ourselves to others. And this will help lessen the stress that we're feeling because of our anxiety. So um, where I want to start with this is that we're going to start off with what's called a reset breath work exercise. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you first, and then we will um, do it together. So um, this one here, you, you want to get comfortable as always, and um, make sure that your clothes aren't restrictive and um, if you need to, you can go ahead and pause the video and get yourself comfortable. So this one, it again is called a reset and it is a tri-active um, breath technique. So that means that we're doing three things. We're going to breathe in using our mouth and we're going to breathe into our belly and in the same breath, we're going to bring it up to our chest and then we're going to exhale through the mouth using our mouth, of course. So let me go ahead and demonstrate for you. And then I'm going to have you join me. And it's always so nice to start off with breath work because it helps us to, to shift, to shift from our minds and get into our body. So um, you can pretend like you're here for an anxiety workshop or whatever it is that is um, your challenge. You know, just plug that word into this, whether it be maybe depression or maybe it's um, low self-esteem, whatever it is, just plug it in and pretend that that's what we're working on today. 
you know, the workshops that I do have in the future aren't going to be um, just focused on one thing. It, it's um, if you have problems in whatever area, and it, they're going to be interactive um, workshops as well. So you'll be able to state what the issue is that you're having, and then we can uh, talk about other breath work and stuff um, that will help you. So I'm going to go ahead and get comfortable. And this one, you know, you would want to do it for about three to five minutes, but of course we're not going to do three to five minutes today. I'm just going to teach you how to do it and then you can practice it on your own later. And as always, go ahead and check with your doctor first because there are some health concerns. Um, people with like lung issues or heart issues or even sinus issues uh, are not able to do certain breath routines. I know I found it very difficult because I have sinus problems. Um, I would end up with some serious sinus headaches when I was doing my, um, my certification program. So I had to be really careful not to do repeated um, breathing methods, certain ones anyway. So go ahead, get comfortable. And we're going to sit up straight. And if you would like to close your eyes, please feel free. That helps us to focus better. But if you're not comfortable do, doing that, then just let your eyes be um, closed gently, just so that you're aware of your surroundings. And so I like to start with a cleansing breath. And that's where I'm going to take a deep breath in through my nose. And then I'm going to blow it out of my mouth. And then I'm going to go into the triactive breath work. So go ahead and do the, the breath in. <sighs> okay, now the triactive. I'm breathing in with my mouth into my belly. So I'm going to put my, my right hand on my belly and my left hand on my chest. So I breathe into my belly and up into my chest, and then out my mouth. So please feel free to join me. And you might find you'll need a glass of water. Sometimes it helps to have like a throat lozenge, but you have to be careful that you don't suck it down your throat. So let's just go ahead and do a few rounds of this together. Now this breath work really helps if you've been really upset. So maybe say you were crying or you were having a panic attack or you just got over an argument. Just sit quietly somewhere by yourself and just get back into your body. And when you're doing this, try to imagine your body filled with a white glowing light and just feel the energy of that tingling around in your body and bringing um, that calming, peaceful sensation. Let's go ahead and do a couple more. Hmm. So if you'd had a panic attack or if you had been crying, hopefully this will help you. Now, um, what I have found for myself personally with any modality they don't always work. Now, um, I'm not saying it never works, but I'm saying there are times where I've tried it to where it didn't work. And something happened to me last week. I don't recall what it was, but I remember I was trying to do breath work because I was all worked up inside. And I was, I won't say I was having a panic attack. I was just breathing heavy and I don't know if I was angry, I don't recall what, but I kept trying to breathe, kept trying to calm myself, and then I was getting a bit frustrated because I found that I was not calming down. And so I kept trying, and then I was trying different um, breath work modalities, and that wasn't working. And so I just said, okay, I'm just going to sit here quietly. And that's when sometimes, you know, you bring something else in, you know, maybe some mindfulness or, um, you know, just, just quit altogether, you know, just stop with the expectations. And um, 
when I stop putting pressure on myself to feel better, then um, it kind of magically happened. I realized that I was calmer and, it, and the breath work, um, it, it didn't work the way I had anticipated, but what it did do is help me get into my body and to realize that I wasn't, um, I wasn't feeling calm. So this is where the um, emotional intelligence comes in because when we look at um, that self-awareness, the self-awareness was I was aware that I wasn't calming down. And then the self-regulation part was I did try to calm down through breath work and other modalities, but it wasn't working. And uh, anyway, uh, like I said, thankfully it ended up working out to where I was peaceful again. But um, anyway, I want to go ahead and go over my notes. And you know, I know that was a bit jagged there with the, the breath work and stuff. And the workshop is going to be a lot smoother because um, I'm actually going to be teaching it at the time and you'll be participating. So we'll be going into the breath work. And um, Anyway, again, I do encourage you to practice this on your own. Make sure that you've got your doctors okay. And um, again, I'm looking for a date and a time. So if there's a specific day or time that is better for you to do a workshop, and this workshop's going to be like three to four hours long because it will include... Um, I'm going to be putting breath work throughout uh, teaching about emotional intelligence and uh, effective communication. And then I think I'm also going to add a, a little segment about highly sensitive people because I'm a highly sensitive person and there are different techniques on different things that uh, I'd like to include because I think... A lot of times the people who are, are tapping into these types of videos happen to be highly sensitive because we're looking for ways to calm ourselves. And so um, if that's you, then, then be on the lookout for this. Or if you know people. When I was teaching third grade, um, one of my students, the parents came to me and, and let me know how their child was highly sensitive. So... I always use that student as a gauge to see if I was being too aggressive in my teaching or if my behavior was a little bit off because I could read that kid's face and see if he was uncomfortable or not. So um, anyway, let's move on here. Um, let's see. And again, you know, I know it's, it's disjointed. I did the breath work and then... Um, now we're going to be going into the, let's see. Well, there is another little story I want to tell you first. So with, with breath work, you know, this is one that actually worked. Today I was at a acupuncture appointment and I'm fairly new to acupuncture. And, um, you know, the acupuncturist had put all these needles in my back and then she hooked me up to some wires to do some electrical stimulation and um then she left the room and I was was thinking and this is me talking myself into a bit of a panic of you know they didn't leave a call button they didn't leave a way to reach out if I had a problem and I had accidentally tweaked my back or, or pulled down one of those wires to where it aggravated one of the needles and it, it really hurt and um so I, I just knew I wasn't going to get up because that, that would have been bad. But So I practiced the breath work. And so just breathing in and out. It was just a, a simple in and out breath through my, my nose, in and out through the nose, and um, just calming myself. And before I knew it, I had no pain. And I was almost asleep. I was that relaxed. So I found that to be very helpful. So like I said, it doesn't always work but then there are times where it works beautifully. So just keep trying. Um, but back to our little micro mini workshop here. Um, you know, if you have pain of any kind, you know, acknowledging the, the pain 
and you know by putting my attention on that spot that was hurting I find that it's often like giving a an upset child attention because when you give that child attention and you're listening to that child and allowing that child to talk and express itself then um, then usually the the child will stop and be calm and that's what happens when we have pain so if we can direct our attention to whatever pain we have and even breathe into that pain then that pain can dissipate it might not go away completely but it can be lessened so um that's that's the the beauty of being able to identify the pain so um let me see here i wanted to go ahead and then identify with the emotional intelligence um let's see oh i'm just i'm just looking at my notes here to make sure that i cover everything so the Anyway, I'm, I've just got distracted, and I apologize for that. Um, just thinking about about different things, and you know, and this is a good time for me to practice uh, just that self awareness. That okay, I find that I am suddenly distracted. So that's my awareness, and the um, self regulation is like, okay, how will I regulate this? How am I going to get myself back on track? How can I regulate that behavior? And you know, this is, this is a beautiful thing for anxiety. Like I said, that we're pretending that we came to this workshop for anxiety. We did our breath work to get into our bodies. And now what we're going to do is work on identifying why we might be anxious and so for me i i wrote it out here um with uh you know we did the breath work now we're going to do emotional intelligence and if you recall the five components of emotional intelligence are uh, the self-awareness self-regulation motivation empathy and social skills so um you know, oftentimes with being able to be aware of the anxiety, it's um, you can ask the question of who, what, when, why, where, how, all those questions of, okay, maybe who caused me to be anxious or when did it start? Why am I feeling this way? And how, how can I feel better? That kind of stuff. And so like for now, let's say that, okay, I'm feeling anxious and what triggered it? What triggered that anxious feeling in me? And this is the first step in emotional intelligence is that self-awareness. And so let's just say I am, I'm feeling really anxious right now because I lost track on uh, where I was going with this video. Okay. So now to self-regulate that let's um see what i have here uh the deep breathing so i could start a breathing exercise and you wouldn't even know it i could i could just be calming myself through a breathing exercise and and you know what there is no shame in letting people know say you know what i'm feeling anxious right now i'm just going to take a, a couple of moments to take some deep breaths to calm myself And then practice that mindfulness, practice that being present in the moment that, you know what, every moment is a new moment and I can start fresh. So I'm going to uh, start fresh right now. And another uh, self-regulation um, technique that I can use to manage the anxiety is what's called progressive muscle relaxation. And we've talked about this before as well, where you're going up from your feet upward where you're tightening the muscles. And so, you know, let's just start with our hands. You know, we're just tightening them as po as tight as possible. Squeeze, 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 and then release. And then your forearms, 
and your arms and your shoulders, just squeeze them into you and then release and just squeeze yourself really tightly, right? And then just squeeze your face, right? And you're just gonna let that go. And that helps us reduce that physical tension that we feel in our body and that can help us to feel less anxious. And so there's another thing that's called cognitive restructuring. And that's um, identifying and challenging the thoughts that we have. So um, thoughts like, I can't do this, you know, like, I can't finish this video. I can't finish this video. I'm too anxious because I messed it up. I should start all over, you know, and you change that thought to, ah, I can do this video. I'm just going to start right where I'm at. And I am just going to thank you guys for being here with me and watching me work through this um, anxious, maybe little panic attack. You know, uh, I'm avoiding a panic attack because I have you here to help walk me through this, right? And we're a community and we are working together and I feel your support. You're supporting me and... You know, that's kind of what we want to do in this, um, this workshop that, that I'm creating. I want to create a, a community where we come together and we feel supported by each other and that we can find a peaceful place there. So the motivation to releasing and managing my anxiety is to have better sleep, have better overall, you know, my overall well-being just be improved and then to cope better in my daily life and to just be happier and more productive. So if I can manage my stress level and my anxiety, I'm just gonna be happier and healthier all around. So that's my motivation for improving my anxiety levels. And now the empathy part. You know, we are so good at empathizing for other people, but how about for ourselves? So today I'm going to practice some empathy on myself and I am going to forgive myself and encourage myself to just keep going. Just keep doing what I'm doing and finish up this video and sharing with you guys. And, you know, I'm actually feeling really happy because... I know it might seem weird, but I do feel connection. I feel happiness and relief. You know, I went from feeling really anxious to now that I've had that awareness that I'm anxious because I was having some issues initially with the video. And then I came up with some ways to self-regulate, to calm that anxiety and my motivation. You know, I motivated myself on, okay, if I can calm myself and get rid of this anxiety, I'm going to feel better overall. And then to have empathy for myself, you know, and then the final uh, emotional intelligence component is social skills. So when you have good social skills, you're able to get along better with others. You're able to communicate better. You're able to speak your mind and feel less stress. And then that also lowers that anxiety. So the five components um, of emotional intelligence really help me to feel calmer. And so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to infuse another uh, breath work opportunity here because I want to go from this and I'm going to transition, transition into effective communication. But first, why don't you breathe with me? We're just going to breathe in four counts and exhale four counts. And we're going to do this in through our nose, okay? But we're going to take that clearing breath first. So let's sit up nice and, and tall and relax our bodies. You close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you. And we're taking that cleansing breath. Now breathe in four counts. Exhale four counts. Breathe in. Exhale. 
Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. You know, sometimes I find myself exhaling out of my mouth and, you know, I'm having empathy and self-compassion and I'm not beating myself up. I'm just reminding myself, okay, breathe through your nose next time. So let's move on to the emotional, uh, or not emotional intelligence, but the effective communication. So once we have figured things out to where we have... Um, We've calmed ourselves down. We've figured out what's causing our anxiety and ways to cope with it. Now we want to be able to express ourselves to our loved ones. So um, let me take a moment here and, and see here. Okay, so what I had come up with. So pretend that you are having anxiety over food. So you are worried about the food that you're eating right now and that you're afraid that it's going to cause some adverse effects on your health. So what you want to do is improve your, your food intake, the quality of the food. And so you're not so sure how your partner is going to take this, whether it be your husband or wife or your roommate or your children, whoever it is that you might be sharing meals with. Um, they might not be um, excited about a dietary change. So uh, you know it's going to cost more money as well. And um, you want to be able to share the process and, and walk through it with, with your family member, whoever it is that you want to share this concern. So again, let's go back to the anxiety here. So I'm having anxiety about changing up my food because I'm worried that my health isn't as good as it could be because I'm not eating high quality foods. And so I want to make that change. So again, by having done the breath work and calm my mind and done the emotional intelligence and realize that I have anxiety because I feel like I need to change my diet and I'm a little bit nervous about talking with my partner about it. And so now I come to the part where I want to effectively communicate with my family member. So I have created this conversation quick guide to where, you know, I'm just organizing my thoughts and stuff because what happens to me is if I have something that's really um, weighing on my heart and I'm feeling stressed about it and I'm already anxious and I'm not in my right frame of mind, I can get extremely emotional or even start arguing again, that arguing for no apparent reason. I can just, you know, get over, you know, overwhelmed and, and snap, you know, snap at people, yell, whatever, you know, and I don't like that. I don't like doing that. That's not effective communication and I don't want to cause any problems. I just want to tell you what's on my heart and mind. So with using uh, this quick guide, you know, it helps you to organize your thoughts and your ideas and ways to start a conversation from your heart space because you want to get in your heart space first because what happens when you're feeling so emotional and triggered, you just end up um, having an argument and hurting feelings and then you, you create more problems and you don't solve the problem that you want to solve. So I also have rules of engagement and you know these are things that we will go over in the real workshop. So we'll go over the rules of engagement and you know I like to start off a conversation with a positive shared memory and then close the conversation with a positive shared memory. So say I start the conversation, I want to share something with you. How um you know, hey, you're you're my new friend. You know, you're a viewer here. And I remember when we first started here on this channel that you were supporting me and you were giving me great encouragement through the comments. And I really appreciated that. You know, so that's how I start my conversations. And then I want to present a clear and concise topic for the conversation. So my topic would be, I want to... Um, 
change up the diet. And then I want to give the, the objectives why. You know, I, my objective is to, to have you know, better health, um, to feel better about myself, to calm myself. Because you know what? Anxiety is linked to the foods we eat. You know, some things like red dye number four and other things can really um, affect your behavior, your mood and stuff. So, uh, and you also want to present what your desired outcome is because if you can go into a conversation with that desired outcome in mind and share that with your partner, you're going to be much more likely to come to that conclusion. And, you know, I do have it set that if you're going to have, if, if it starts to get heated, to have the agreement to stop the conversation, you know, because the other day I had, it wasn't a conversation. It was, uh, I had a, a thing happen with my son and there was a trigger and it, it was something had happened to where it was a, a trauma trigger. And I, I can tell you, I felt like I wasn't even in my own body. It was the strangest experience. It, it almost scared me really because it's like, where did this come from? And so and I mean, it really got escalated and elevated. And there were a couple different things in my life of the traumas, a couple traumas that, that, that came to mind. And wow, you know, I took a shower and I was able to just um, wash it down the drain like I had shared in a, a previous video about going in there and just taking all the anger and emotion and just showering it away. And then I went through some breathing techniques and talked myself down and just really went into the emotional intelligence aspect of the awareness and like what what happened and so like I said I was able to um, identify two triggers that had happened and you know because prior to that I couldn't stop crying it was the weirdest thing I mean when then also here's here's another tip too for you um, you know this pain that I'm having in my low back that I'm going to the chi I mean that I've gone to the chiropractor for it too but to the acupuncturist you know those are traumas and you know they tell you to really be careful because that's releasing the trauma and earlier that day I'd had a massage as well that was working that out and so the, these were traumas that were released and um, so when if you wonder you know sometimes where something's coming from that's it, you know, so I, like I said, I couldn't stop crying, but once I identified it, it stopped. I stopped crying. It was like, oh, wow, wow. I hadn't thought about those things in years. And, you know, so then I went back and I was able to have a, a sane conversation with my son and, and, you know, talk about this and say, Hey, you know, wow, you know, I, I, um, apologize for, freaking out like that and and I was not expecting that and um and then also you know I said if in the future and this comes back to where we were if in the future things start getting heated and I ask you to stop and we need to table it and come back to it please let's do that because that will stop me from you know, just really saying mean, hurtful things or freaking out or whatever, you know, escalating it, you know, and, and, you know, I feel sad that it happened. But then again, I don't because I was actually able to identify those traumas and release them and explain them and own it. You know, I owned it. You know, I said, hey, you know, I, I freaked out. I really, that really upset me. And this is why. And I don't expect that that will happen again. But now that I know this, you know, let's, let's make better plans in the future about doing whatever it was we were doing, um, uh, communicating, let's communicate better. And again, this is effective communication. So if we know in ourselves the best way to communicate, um, I personally need to have you tell me, tell me what exactly you want steps a through z what you want from me because if i don't know what the next step is i could possibly have fear there and anxiety and then that triggers a behavior so anyway you um you can use this 
conversation quick guide to get yourself organized for that conversation and be prepared because when you're prepared for it, then it goes off so much better. So you want to be able to have discussion points. Say, you know, I want to discuss having menus, having these certain items on the menu, the price point, because if you're going to be eating organic food, it's going to cost more. So you definitely want to make sure that you're not wasting the food. So definitely go over your discussion points and then, um, then you're going to wrap it up, you know, and these are things that, um, that I will be sharing in this workshop. You know, we are going to do breath work. We're going to identify an issue that we might be having and each person can have their own issue. It doesn't matter what your issue is, but through the emotional intelligence exercises, you're going to find out what it is that is eating at you and then ways to self-regulate. And then, um, then we go from there and then that way we're able to come up with some effective communication. Uh, we're able to have a better outline because we know what we're thinking, we know what we're feeling and we're knowing knowing what we want, what we want to communicate. So, um, anyway, I think, you know, we've, we've discussed the breath work today. We've discussed emotional intelligence and effective communication, how to outline that. And, you know, just be looking out for the workshop. Like I said, I am developing it right now and I'm coming up with the time that's going to work best, you know, the date and the time, and we'll be going from there. So anyway, I do thank you so much for your time. I know this is, this has been my longest video, but in the process, you know, we did, like I said, a little micro mini, um, workshop because I wanted you to have an idea of what to expect. And we're definitely going to be going a whole lot deeper into all of these areas and it's going to be interactive. So you'll be able to ask me questions and hopefully we can work through some things together. So until next time, I wish you peace.